Chances are you've experienced a Nissan Z in your lifetime. For me, the 350Z was my favorite car to customize on Midnight Club 3 on the PS2. It's pretty crazy how things can come full circle because Nissan invited me to Las Vegas to drive their all new Nissan Z and I'm absolutely sold on it. The Nissan Z is retro inspired by its predecessor, the 240Z, which can be seen from its headlights, along with the fastback roof that shares similar curves. The taillights are inspired by the 90s 300Z pattern, which definitely fits the back of this vehicle. I love how Nissan took aspects of different generations to create this new modern design that looks familiar and new at the same time. The front grille is rectangular in shape, which gives it a unique look. I honestly like it a lot better in person than in pictures. As far as the side profile, this is probably my favorite angle of this car because you get to really see that signature retro Nissan Z shape. Anyway, depending on the trim level, you'll either get 18 inch or 19 inch wheels with multi-spoke designs that fits the overall design language. The Z was first announced in this yellow colorway, but now you have this red and blue as well. I personally have to say the blue colorway with black accents definitely fits the look the best in my opinion. Also the exterior looks a lot better in person because the body lines are a lot more prominent. Moving into the vehicle, there is a good bit of cargo space considering this is a two seater. Speaking of the seats, they are heated and made of leather along with stitching and accents to match the colorway. You'll also find Alcantara throughout the door trims that gives it this premium sport car look. The seats feel like ones in racing cars with a lot of support. So whether you're taking tight turns or drifting, you should have plenty of support here. The steering wheel feels great on the hand. It's not flat bottom or anything like that. And it also has really nice tactile buttons to control the digital gauge cluster and some of the other functions in the vehicle. In terms of tech, there is an eight inch touchscreen display with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto supported, along with the Bose audio system that sounds phenomenal. I really like this three pod gauge design which are kept analog to give this retro look. You now have this full digital gauge cluster which is customizable and it looks really nice when the navigation system is on. USB-C is integrated in this cabin. Unfortunately, there is no wireless charging here. I'd say the only thing that I don't like about this cabin is the fact that Nissan likes to reuse a ton of dials and buttons. Like my 2011 G37 has the same exact dome lights, locks, trunk release, and window switches. I get it from a manufacturer's perspective since it's cost effective, but seriously, this is a 2023 vehicle with buttons and switches that are over a decade old. The new Z will be powered by a version of Infiniti's 3-liter twin-turbo V6, sending power to the rear wheels, which is able to produce 400 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque. This is the same engine we've seen in the Infiniti Q50 and Q60. Now, the Nissan Z comes in both a 9-speed automatic and a 6-speed manual. I spent more time with the manual, but I also had the opportunity to drive the automatic as well. So, what's pretty crazy is, prior to driving, the manual Z, I've only driven one other manual car and I was pretty terrible at it. In fact, I really couldn't get to that first gear shift. So the 2023 Nissan Z is the first car I can say I officially learned how to drive in manual and that was partly thanks to Will. I honestly, mostly thank you, Will, because I literally couldn't have done it without you. Um, he was there instructing me as I was driving. I did stop in traffic a few times. I'm not perfect at it. But we're definitely get, getting there and I'm convinced I need a manual car now. And shout out to Brian Tong for allowing me to use some of his footage in this video. Wait, the amount of power this vehicle pushes out is pretty crazy. As someone who daily drives the Infiniti G37 with the VQ37 engine that you can also find in the 370Z, I have to say this is noticeably more powerful. Now something that I observed is the traction isn't the best off the line because of the Bridgestone or the Yokohama tires that come stock with this car. So I would probably switch out to some Michelins if you really want to get the best performance. You can definitely go from zero to 60 in four seconds. And I honestly, you can get this under four seconds with the right set of tires. Now, by no means am I an experienced manual driver, but 
from first to third gear, this car is still pulling, which is very impressive. The automatic transmission shifts really fast, and I do wish the steering was a little bit more responsive. I like the steering feedback better on my Infiniti G37. Overall, Nissan Z fans are going to really appreciate this vehicle. The Z has plenty of power for the track, and it's plenty comfortable in cruising speeds for long road trips. This is a very versatile car that anybody from car enthusiasts can enjoy it to regular consumers looking for a sport car. In conclusion, the Nissan Z is the perfect take on a retro-inspired design language. I can't wait for this car to begin shipping because I know a ton of car enthusiasts are going to come up with all sorts of mods for this vehicle. It's pretty amazing how I went from customizing the 350Z on a PS2 game to being the first car I fully learned to drive in manual. My name is Victor Kabanga. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more coverage on the Nissan Z, be sure to stay tuned by clicking on that subscribe button. And I can't wait for this car to release and I get my hands on to fully test this out for a week and see if this is really worth that under $40,000 price tag that Nissan is selling it at. Once again, thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next one. Bye.